What's going on you guys? Welcome to the Single Guy channel. My name's Lloyd. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about how to be successful with women when you have anxiety problems, you have emotional problems, you have a lot of issues that are going on in your life associated with those things. You know, I myself have had these problems for a very long time. So in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is I'm gonna be talking about my story and kind of how I overcame my anxiety problems uh, or was able to manage them to a level where I was able to be extremely successful with women. And I think if you're a guy who's suffering from these issues too, if you watch this video, hopefully this will give you an idea about something that you can try to help get over this. Okay, cool. So before I get into this, if you guys are looking to get trained by me in person, check out my live training schedule, you guys. I'm gonna be hitting up San Francisco in early January. I'm also gonna be hitting Toronto, Los Angeles, Miami, New York City, and Scottsdale. So take a look at that. If any of those cities sound familiar to you, I would take a look at my live training schedule. Would love to see you. Okay, cool. So let's talk about my story and my struggles with anxiety and how I overcame them to be able to be successful with women. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna tell you here is that what is the level of anxiety that I had, okay? So I've taken several personality tests um, and the last personality test I took, I got 89 out of 100 in terms of emotionality and uh, 89 out of 100 in terms of anxiety. Now I've taken a bunch of other tests such as Jordan Peterson's test, I think I got 99 out of 100 in terms of like very anxious behavior. Um, there's another one that I took, like the Myers-Briggs also showed that I had a high levels of um, of anxiousness and anxiety and people will tell me, you know, even my mother will tell you that I've always been a very anxious person, okay? My anxiety has gotten a lot better, okay? The 89 out of 100 I got is probably would have been 100 out of 100 if I had taken that test two to three years ago. And in fact, if I took a couple tests five years ago in, uh, when I was in college and basically it told me that I was extremely at risk for suicide and depression. Well, I was depressed at the time. Extremely at risk for suicide because of my extreme high levels of anxiety. So I've improved, but I still am <laughs> overall a very, very anxious person. So how did I succeed with women despite these challenges? Okay, well, the first thing that I did was I didn't use my anxiety as an excuse ever uh, for why I can't achieve my dreams. And, and I know that can be trouble for some people, but for me, it was something that I either dealt with this issue or I'm just not successful, you know? And it was either those two choices. So what well, the first thing that I started doing was I started saying, okay, I have extreme high levels of anxiety. How are ways that I can cut down on uh, my anxiety levels? So one thing that I noticed about myself was that, and I noticed this in a lot of other people too, is that if I thought too far into the future, then I would start to get upset. So I would look at my current situation right now and I didn't have, at the time I didn't have any friends, I didn't have anybody who I could trust, uh, I didn't have any girls that liked me. None. None that I liked back and that made me really upset because there was tons of girls that I liked around that didn't like me. So I would think, okay, how can I get these girls or one of these girls to like me, to date me, to do something like that? That was so far into the future that when I thought about it and thought how unachievable it was, I would get really upset. So what I started to do is I started to think, okay, can I get one girl to maybe laugh at my joke? Okay, all right, I couldn't get one girl to laugh at my joke. Could I get one girl to talk to me? All right, awesome, I was able to do that today, so that's a win. Then I would start by planning it step by step. I could get a girl to laugh at my joke, I could get a girl to talk to me for a while, I could get a girl to give me her, her phone number, I could get a girl to show up to a party that I was going to, I could get a girl to you know go out on a date with me, and then so, so on and so forth. When I broke it down in baby steps, I was able to actually see things and they seemed achievable to me. So that cut down on my anxiety a little bit too. The other thing that I started doing was I started exposing myself to uncomfortable situations. And I think this is a big thing that a lot of anxious people should start doing more and more. Because the first time you do something, it's so like paralyzingly scary that after you do it, everything else seems a little bit easier. So if you spend time not doing anything, not taking action and not doing it, I found that that actually made my anxiety a lot worse. If I was willing to push through the, the little bit of burst of anxiety that I would get to talk to a new girl or something, like that it actually got better and better over time so even though I was really really anxious and crippled with anxiety at the beginning if I would do one thing maybe like maybe I would talk to a girl who was working as opposed to a girl who was like just on the street or something like that that would help me get over my nerves a little bit because usually the people that are working are very nice to you I mean they're they're on the job so they're not gonna say anything too mean to you because they don't want to get fired 
So I would start with them and then I would work my way up, okay? Uh, or maybe I would talk to some girls that I wasn't terribly attracted to. So that way that would cut down on the nerves a little bit. I would take baby steps, okay? So I took baby steps when it came to the steps that I would take for, you know, making strides with women. And then I would practice getting over my anxiety by actually executing on those baby steps slowly but surely. And the final thing that I did, which I think a lot of people could start doing, is that we tend to fight things. So when a doctor tells you that you're a very anxious person, when your parents or a test or a personality quiz tell you that you're, you have anxiety problems, that you're suffering from them and you need, you need this medication to get over them, you know, I just feel like for me, that's not a good way of looking at the problem. There's actually a lot of cool things to being an anxious person. I actually like this side of myself. You know, I have a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, I have a suffer from insomnia. Don't like that. But at the same time too, I'm, uh, I'm kind of a perfectionist, you know? I wanna get things right. And because I worry a lot and I'm anxious in certain areas, Although it might cause me a little bit of discomfort at the time, overall I think it, it could be good for performance. I want to, like if, I'm, like if I'm coming out with a program or if I'm coaching a student or in growing my business or doing jujitsu, I really want to make sure that I get things right. And I notice that my anxiety pushes me harder and motivates me, me more than a lot of other guys. So my anxiety is not all bad. I actually don't see it as a disorder or I don't see it as a problem quite as much as I think some other people might if maybe a doctor told them uh, or the way I used to see it in the past. I used to see it as just a horrible thing that wasn't going wasn't gonna to be good for anybody. Okay, um, so I, I'm, I'm more at ease with my anxiety. And because of that, one thing that I do that I think is a lot different than a lot of other people that suffer from this is if I'm anxious, I'm anxious. That's okay. Like if I'm gonna be scared before I go up and talk to a girl or if I'm feeling really, I have a lot of high levels of anxiety at the moment, I'm okay with it, okay? And what I mean, I'm not okay with it like it's totally great, I'm skipping around happy, but I, but I try not to fight the feelings. Because I've noticed that if I try and fight my anxiety, it takes a lot more energy for me to do that and then pretend like I'm not anxious than it is for me to just be nervous. Just embrace the feelings and say, oh, whew, you know, I'm feeling kind of nervous. We'll see what happens when I go talk to this girl. And so for me, if I embrace the feelings and learn how to live with them and learn how to be better, then I find it helps a lot. And so sure, my anxiety has come down as meditation uh, has helped you know, being, not reacting to things in the same way, learning mindset shifts. Um, but overall, I'm still an anxious person. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So me living with it has become extremely important. And if you're a person who's living with that, I encourage you maybe at times it might be good to stop fighting your anxiety and, you know, just preventing yourself from doing anything, but just being able to carry on with your day and accepting it. You know, I'm going to be a little anxious today. That's okay. I can still get my work done. I can still talk to that girl. I can still make the, take the actions that I need to take to improve my life. So if that helps you guys, I hope it did. Um, you know, I've been a person that's suffering from this for ages. A lot of my students and clients suffer from this too, so I help them with it, with it too. If you're a person who suffers from a high level of anxiety, please post in the comment section below. And if you're wondering how to get coached by me one-on-one, -on -one, please fill out my form down below. And if you feel like you're a good fit, then hit me up. Oh, sorry, we'll hit you up <laughs> if that's what happens. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, you guys. Good luck out there.